Welcome back to the Upper Tier Podcast, the football podcast we bring you each and every day on the Dynamo Podcast Network. Head over to YouTube, smash that subscribe and bell notification button. This is your semi-final second leg match reaction. Manchester City 2, PSG 0. Di Maria loses the head. Aggregate 4-1. What were you worried about, Wayne? Walking the park for Man City. Not even a fucking tread of anything. What a game of football. What a game of football, man. And the way the way we played in that first half we were saying Joe Fair, but I was a bit bit nervy at times, but the defense, like you said, what a performance. The defense was resolute. PSG didn't have a shot on target. Um Zinchenko Diaz Walker. Man, Walker, Jesus Christ, the legs on him. I don't know how he's still running the way he does. Uh, John Stones as well. They're all brilliant. Man, everyone across that pitch today showed up and played for the badge and played for Man City today, and it was great. It was absolutely great. I hope Dino's watching this as well. You're right, Dino. How are you, buddy? <laughs> Shout okay, out to Dan. <laughs> Don't worry, he'll hunt you down. He's been hunting you down in the comment sections on these videos already. Don't worry. Um, no, I, I look, I don't think he'd be too bitter about that. Let's be honest. I mean, it was an outstanding performance. I mean, in theory, you have 11 man of the matches there, really, don't you? I mean, with the exception of Edison, really, who had very, very little to do. Let's be honest, you know. Yeah. Um, like, where to begin? Like, I mean, you know how much I love that Senchenko lad. Like, he's just unbelievable little terrier tonight you know what I mean he's just incredible Diaz at the back and I mean the, you know the scary thing the scary thing for me is you bring on Sterling you bring on Aguero Laporte <laughs> didn't even play you know what I mean and like so good at the back so many options is this a culmination of where Man City really should be and it's just like there's a maturity in the side now at this stage where they've learned over years that this is where their place is. This is their destiny. Um, and it's just, you know, it's, it's, I mean, the simple answer really in the comment is it's about time really, isn't it? it look, you could say that, you could say that. Look, you know, even, even me as a Man City fan, I mean, I think you, you kind of got it. Like that maturity is something we've been lacking um, in big games like this or, you know, and having that kind of performance, yeah, as a City fan was, like, as you said at the start, what, what was I worried about? Of course I was worried. But Man City, I was kind of worried, do we have the majority? Did we have the, the head? Like, you've seen, you seen Fernandinho at the end roaring in Zinchenko's face, telling him to calm down, you know, this isn't the time to be losing the head. And that's the kind of thing, you know, as a City fan, was so great to see. And like you said, maybe it is where, you know, the culmination of all the hype and press about this City under Pep Guardiola and everything coming together. I think tonight was the most coming together I've seen, you know. And to be to be fair to Man City, over the last two legs in this PSG game was was kind of especially the second half of the first leg. It, it, it was where kind of City that's the level they should be at, you know. I mean, this you know, I'm sure you watched the game, so I mean, you have seen the space that was opening up in the second half. Like the second half today was just insane, you know. Mares, Mares was outstanding. That kid is. Whatever, whatever, I was going to say, whatever he's eating, but it's Ramadan, so whatever he's not eating at the moment, he's obviously doing him something bloody good because he's absolutely outstanding. All of them, all of them. Yeah, I think it was, um, I, I do believe it's, you know, it is City's time to shine. A lot of these players have matured into outstanding. I mean, you're talking about world-class players all over the pitch. I know we talk about the PSGs and the Barcelonas and the Bayern Munichs and all these type of teams and stuff like that, but City can hold its own with any of those teams in terms of the quality of talent they have. And I mean, hats off to Pep Guardiola as well, an outstanding job he's done there. Like, I mean, you know, if Raheem Sterling there hasn't really figured in the last two or three weeks, you know. Um, Aguero, you know, okay, came on at you know, came on and got a goal the other day or two or whatever it was. And like, you know what I mean? But the way he just manages these players and um, you see Aguero, like only got on there tonight for whatever it was, 10 minutes or whatever it was. But you see him at the end going up to Fernandinho on fist yeah. pump, job done, you know what I mean? So does, yeah. does that kind of bond is there as well, you know? Yeah. As, as, I was, go go ahead. No, no, go on, go on. I was just going to say, like the cohesion in the team was unreal. I don't know. It was... Uh, it's it midway through the second half, like still good good time to go. And I, I can't remember who how the ball broke, but it was Neymar. If you remember, I think it was right near the end, and he ran across the box or whatever. Um, and then as 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 Diaz slid in, Zinchenko took over the defensive role. Yeah. And, and and then when the ball went out of play, John Stones came over. He hugged them and they're high fiving, they're screaming. Yeah. 
each other's faces. That is, but that's exactly what's going to win you, win you, win games at this level. Yeah. Cohesion, knowing, knowing each other's roles on the pitch, trusting the man to your left, to your right, behind you. Some, you know, that's that's what it's about. And I think Man City were showing that today. I mean, Zinchenko was nearly in tears at the end. You know, like yeah. and like you said, Aguero fist bumping Fernandinho. And I want to give a special shout out to Fernandinho, man, because at 36 years of age. He was unbelievable today. You wouldn't have ever said he was that old or that age played a part in it, you know? He's just, you know what it is, even. He's just such a clever player yeah. in terms of him more than anyone knows his age and knows his capabilities. And he just, what he does is he just plays within that. And what he does is with players around him, not his own team, but who he's up against, he suckers them into a level beneath him. And he just yeah. plays through them and stuff like that. He's just outstanding, you know what I mean? When, when when you look at him, like 36 years of age, and he's made a show at that PSG midfield tonight, you know what I mean? Just <laughs> And, you know, it's, it's funny. We talk about it all the time. How many times this year have we mentioned it in previews for PSG matches? Like, you just, if you get at them, they're going to implode. They just implode every time the big players don't show up. You know, you even look at the, you even look at the two toys they had against Bayern Munich and stuff like that. Admittedly, Lewandowski was missing and stuff like that. But like, it was just, they were goal fest. It was end to end. And it was just like, there was no defensive pattern at all. It was just, you score, we score. It was like a table tennis match. You know what I mean? So, and you're not going to get away with that at, at this kind of level. You know what I mean? You will get found out eventually when you come up against such a good defense like cities. They're not going to just play ping pong with your goal for goal. You know what I mean? I, you know, but you could mention anyone tonight. You know what I mean? Like, look at look at PSG. I mean, we have to talk about PSG. Obviously, no, sorry, no, yeah, no, go ahead, go on. PSG, I, I very rarely have I watched Neymar and thought, oh my God, other than his tricks and, and his bit of flair he does in the pitch. Tonight I watched him and I thought he is a captain, he is a leader, right? Because even when PSG were two goals down tonight, he was everywhere on the pitch right he and i'll give i'll give him his deals I, every he was playing he was in the left back position he was in the midfield he was moving the ball i thought he was brilliant name man. and of everyone on psg he stood out with him, you know i thought he was a really good name man. i think the problem for neymar is when when they get sucked into these kind of battles in these games he feels obliged to try and kind of do everything and yeah. the problem is him trying to do everything hampers the team's setup and plan. And, yeah. I, and and then what happens is it negates his effectivity where he should be because he's always somewhere else and he has yeah. so much to do. And like, there's only so many times in your career that you could be three or four players and score a worldy goal. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't yeah. happen that often. And it ain't going to happen against a defence like Man City's defence in the form that they're in. And I just thought with Neymar, you know, at, at times I listen to, I look at Neymar and I just think, you know, what the hell is going on there? You know what I mean? And like, yeah. like Mbappe on the bench who had no, like they had no intentions of playing him. What's he doing on the bench? He's clearly not fit. He clearly was injured or whatever it was. Yeah. Well, what are they even bringing him for to sit on a bench except to give him that bit of exposure on TV or something like that or to potentially pretend that there's a threat there with half an hour to go? It's just ridiculous. It's stupid stuff from Pochettino, really, when you think about it. Um, De Maria, we have to talk about De Maria. I mean, that was just, you know, I, you know, I get it. It's boiled over frustration because... Out of all the players on the pitch tonight, he was the one really running his guts off and trying to make yeah. things happen, you know? And it's just so frustrating for him. And then, like, a Cardi on the pitch looks like he hasn't kicked the ball in 12 months. He, you know, he looked... He, to me, looking at him, he looked out of shape. He was carrying weight, couldn't move. You know what I mean? And he just... I, I don't know what he was even doing out there, you know what I mean? I mean, surely to God, they have a better option than him. Um, and yeah. I think and I think that's what was frustrating Neymar and De Maria because... They were trying to do things for him and it just wasn't coming off. You know what I mean? And then obviously, I mean, Marquinhos, who's absolutely outstanding, world class. You know what I mean? So unlucky with the header that time off the yeah. bar. And he's just like, if you're leaping two foot higher than John Stones, you're a serious footballer. You yeah, know yeah. I mean? it was unbelievable. Well, yeah. no, with, with, with De Maria getting sent off, going back to what you said about Fernandinho, um, I mean, if it, the, the, the game I watched, I don't know what channel you watched on, but the commentator picked it up, picked up on it. And he said, look at Fernandinho going over there to antagonise him. He said, and he stood there almost laughing in his face or whatever, figuratively anyway. 
you know? Right. And then what did he do? He flashed out exactly what Fernandinho wanted him to do. And yeah. he jumped around and and I thought he, I didn't think he was expecting a red, but he got he got exactly he, Fernandinho got exactly what he went over to achieve out of that situation, you know? Exactly yeah. what he wanted. Yeah. You know, and even at the end, I think he put in a heavy, heavy enough challenge on Neymar. And he goes over and he's rubbing his head and all, and you think, oh, you're a shithouse. He's an absolute yeah. shithouse, Fernandinho, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Clever, clever play. Yeah, and you can see you can see Neymar as well. Neymar is looking going. Why did you do that when you knew what he was about? But it's just, it's it's a it's a pent-up, boiled-over frustration. I mean, they were so disappointed last year in the final because yeah. it, it wasn't a brilliant final, but they didn't show up. They, yeah. they literally played the last 10 minutes, if you like, you know what I mean, and didn't show up. So they let themselves down. So they were obviously hoping that this year they could, like, right that wrong, if you like, you know what I mean? And it just hasn't worked out for them. And, of course, De Maria is a hothead. I mean, there's, like, this ain't the first time these things happen with him, you know. There's, there's a no. nasty side to him, you know. Yeah. But I just think there was a lot of that going on all around the pitch. Like, Sanchenko was, was having his little battles as well. Uh, Fernandinho was having little battles in there. Uh, Bernardo was having little battles in there. Mares was getting up in people's faces. Foden has created an art form out of doing it now. He's just torturous to like defenders at this stage. He just totally annoys them. And it's gas when he goes down, he just gets up and just stares at them and just gives them that death stare and then just moves on. It's so frustrating if you're playing against players like that that you can't get into their heads because they're already, you know, 10 steps ahead of you. You know what I mean? And it's a... Uh, yeah, it's frustrating. Like, you see Neymar there, you know, 250 million quid sort of a player and stuff like that. And he just, you know, although he's running around, he's trying his best. He just looks bang average all night long, you know? Yeah, well, Foden, Foden I'm sure you saw the bit of play in the middle of the field, like where it looked, it looked but like the ref was, I think the ref had, had the whistle in his mouth and he skipped over two players, one heavy, heavy enough challenge, and he skipped right over. And you can imagine, even the, the comment that I said it again on the game, but see, can you imagine how frustrating that is? So that's like what Leo, Lionel Messi does to players. He, yeah. he drives them mad by dribbling it and lifting it over yeah. and doing all these bits that you just can't do out and against, you know? He, he was so unlucky tonight. Um, it's some of those little flicks and passes that he made that they just did on another night they come off and I'm not joking you man you're just adding millions and millions and millions and millions onto this last valuation you know what I mean just incredible like you know um, he scored either of those two chances he had tonight. Like, what would his value have been? You know, what would people be saying about him? You know? Like, one, he should have definitely, when he hit the post, I thought, oh, you unlucky, you know. Yeah. But, and then the other one, he hit straight at the keeper, I think, and he should have, he should have done better with that one. Um, yeah. But, but now he's, he, he's, he's quality. He's absolute quality, Phil Fowl. Lee, yeah. And, and like, like you said, like, the defender who was, who was on him done a bit of a job in, in the first half last week, um, if you remember. Like, he wasn't, Phil Foden, they, they, he couldn't play because there was whatever, yeah. you know, and then the changes. And then whatever he learned last week, he's, he obviously learned something, man, because he was on all of them, man. Like, I, I know, but I think I think that's part of our identity, you know. People say all about money and big players. And, I, and I'm not saying we don't have big players. Of course, we do have players like De Bruyne and Mares. But it's now the cohesion, it's the, the the team, it's everyone playing together. It's about eleven men putting in eleven men of the match performances. Now Barry Ederson, Barry Ederson, I, I could say you could nearly give anyone a shout tonight for man of the match, you know. Diaz, yeah. Stones, Kyle Walker, Fernandinho, Gundo in, in the uh, more so in the second half. De Bruyne. Yeah. De Bruyne was brilliant. Like De Bruyne was outstanding. Yeah. You know, very unlucky to get that yellow and all he did was stand there. But you know. Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't believe uh, the lad that we praised so much last week at uh, uh, left back, the blonde chap backer, was it? I, yes. I couldn't believe he wasn't playing. He had a great game last week. And yet he and he dropped him, you know, it was incredible. And then when he came on, he did make a difference, you know, but like it was only too late, you know what I mean? Um that was exactly what I said when I seen him come on. I said, they, they played brilliant last week. How did he not get started this week? Unless he lost the head or something last week or they felt he'd done something to cause the, the free kick or something, maybe. I, I have no idea like what Lloyd yeah. did. Unless he wasn't yeah. fit, maybe, but... I don't see how. I don't know. I mean, like this is the weird thing I find with DC. Like, if you're on the bench, you're fit. If you're not fit, you shouldn't be on the bench. You know, yeah, what yeah. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, um, I mean, because you know, as I said, you're the same thing when Mbappe. You, you're not gonna like, you're not gonna play head games with someone like Pep Guardiola. You know what I mean? I mean, he knows as good as anyone how these things go. You know, um, we are gonna do obviously a, an episode. We're gonna do a road to Istanbul, and we're gonna look at obviously both teams' pats when they're in the final and stuff like that. Looking towards tomorrow night, 
any preference or? Oh, do you know what? I won't, I won't lie because I'm on here. Uh, I'll tell you, the truth. I, I'd love get, I'd love Madrid in the final. That'd be the team I'd want to play against. And uh, most people would think I'm crazy, but Madrid, Madrid would be, I think, something that we can. They, they have a bit of a style to how they play. They have a bit of a. Ch- Chelsea are, are still going through that phase. I think you know they're still finding the perfect way to play, and they're pulling it off quite a lot recently. You know. Yeah. Um, they only done a number of, on us in the FA Cup. It wasn't a scintillating game. We're talking, you know, they were lucky maybe City didn't play well. Um, but Chelsea, Chelsea have that. I mean, as as a football fan over the years, you've seen Chelsea do it against the odds. You've seen Chelsea, you know, when everyone wrote them off, or you know, that's in their club to just stick it to everyone, you know. Um, and I'd be more worried about getting Chelsea. And I just before you go on there, just something for the United fans, Man City now. Broke Man United's record tonight with the most wins in a Champions League campaign. So we now hold the record for the most wins in a single Champions League campaign from a Premier League team. Very good. Um, <laughs> we, we, we always like we always like when Manchester United records get broken. It's not a bad thing. Um, yeah, I suppose I suppose with Real as well, there's a couple of hotheads in there as well. So if you deployed kind of the same tactics in terms of getting up in people's grill and and like sort of like that was kind of mind games off the ball and stuff like that. You're probably more inclined to get at Real Madrid than you would at Chelsea because Chelsea are pretty good at their own mind games as well. So they kind of know the score. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think if if I was in your position and it was Liverpool as well, I think even though like we've pretty good record against Chelsea and stuff like that, you know, there is a bit of a kind of a hoodoo there, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but still, I wouldn't mind putting Real to the sword either. We... Definitely out them one, you know, and it's disappointing that we didn't get the job done. But um, I mean, one half of the route of Istanbul is already complete. Um, I believe it. All you need to do now is get yourself a vaccine and get going. <laughs> <laughs> get the hell well, over there somehow, you know. Did you hear? Did you hear? There was talk of uh, there's talk of if if Chelsea make the final and City, obviously City have made the final that they might. I don't see how they. Do it financially, but they might move the final to Wembley. I don't know if that's actually going to happen or if that was just some headline. But I don't see how you could rob Istanbul of the chance of that happening, you know. Um, <sighs> but again, COVID, stranger things have happened, you know. Yeah, I, su- I suppose the only driving force behind it would be the fact that you could have fans in there and stuff like that, you know, more so. But then, I mean, they're allowing fans in. Um, did they, didn't they announce today that they're going to allow Arsenal are going to have 10,000 fans in for their last game of the season and stuff like that? So there is movement in that area at the moment. So you never know. And, and the game would be, what, about a week or so, 10 days after the league finishes. So yeah. it could it could potentially happen, you know. Um. But yeah, sure, even if it's in Istanbul, I mean, the fact that you're there and you have an opportunity now to get your hands on big ears, you know, it's yeah. a great it's a great opportunity, you know, there's no better feeling. I know as a Liverpool fan, it's incredible. Um, the closest we've ever been, man. This is the closest we've ever been. And to all the football fans out there, yeah, I, when I was a kid, I remember battling for relegation. I never, ever thought this day would come. Well, here we are. Here we are. Well, there you go. It's, you know, you know, dreams do come true. You know, I waited thirty years for a league. So, like, you oh, here's here's your brother. You know, I suppose, yeah. like, we, you know, we'd have to wish him best of luck tomorrow night, wouldn't we? Really, we'd be remiss if we didn't. Um, and no doubt we'll do a match reaction tomorrow night. So, like, make sure you're available because if Chelsea do get through, you're both coming on, and you can go at it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Without a shadow of a doubt, as always. Pleasure coming on, you know what I mean? I mean, it's great to do these reactions. Dynamo Podcast Network on YouTube for the the episodes. They're out every single day at this stage. Football is without a doubt of madness at the moment. We, I just can't get away from podcasts at the moment, even if I wanted to. Um, obviously, anchor for the audio versions of the show. Wayne, great coming on. This has been your Man City PSG match reaction. Pleasure as always. Cheers, Wayne. Cheers, Al.